Hi everyone, it's Louise with Louise Mickey Art. I'll be diving right in because I don't have an introduction of all the paints, so I will list them in the video and also in the description. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, last one of this set that has just been unbelievable. Just for clarity, that's an unbelievable exclamation point. This has been great. And I know I'm sharing a lot of coaster creations lately. I just can't keep up. Paints are very, very thick. But as I've said before, on a small piece like this, you can get away with thick because it's just a, it's just got to run a short distance. I would never be able to do this like on a deconstructed bloom. The paints just would never get there. But on the good note, thicker paints definitely help hold the cells together. This is Zeus and Quinacridone. This is gold. The gold is probably the, the right thickness. Oh boy, what was that? Oh my lord. I don't think I want all that in one spot. I will say art creations definitely mimic life. If I don't like something, then I need to do something to fix it. Well, we'll see what happens. That was a hefty blob. Okay, and then my little tiny bit of greenish black. And this is where you have problems, is when you get to the bottom of the barrel and you have a goober, this is where it comes out. <laughs> Look how thick this is, aww. Yeah, this one better come out because otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. Tiny bit of cell activator. And this is the Australian Floetrol cell activator mixed about two parts Floetrol to one part paint. It is also thick. Everything's thick, but at least it's all thick together. So if you followed me, you know I like to gab during the blowout. Basically here, I'm spending a lot more time, especially on this set, with blowing the cell activator straight down into the paint because number one, it's thicker, and it's taking me a little more time to get that nice round circle with the ridge so that I can blow at that. So once I get that nice ridge, I'm blowing into the ridge, which blows the cell activator over the top of the paints and then the paints over the top of the pillow. I don't know if you can notice it here, but I'm blowing more down first and then out, kind of like in a little bit of a downward swoop. For this particular batch especially, it's helping me out because I'm catching that ridge and really getting a good push to blow it out over the pillow. So that's what I do during my blowouts, everybody. And then I go all the way around until I get the entire bloom spread out. And now once it's blown out here, I'm just taking the pillow and spreading it to the edge so I have a nice place for my composition to flow to once I start spinning it out. So normally I cut a lot of this portion out because it's very mundane, but it's very important to have that pillow not only go to the edge, but go over the side so that it has a, a great place for the composition to spread to. If you've ever had a bloom that you're trying to spread out and it seems like one side's not moving, check your side because it's very likely that your pillow has not gone over the side. And when that happens, it almost acts like a break and keeps the composition from spreading out like it should. So I just wanted to point that out and very clearly cover it, that this is an important part, even though it's not a very glamorous part of this process. Another gorgeous one. So a perfect case in point here, the coaster is not centered and the side that it's off kilter to has got much more paint. Just to show you how that centrifugal force has a big impact on how your um, composition blows out. Now I'm going to uh, cut some of the cleanup here as we go. I 
I don't even know where to end with this. These are all so pretty. I am so glad I went back and made more of this. Oh my gosh. I got a little pink going on up there. I don't know why. Let's see if I can get some of that off. Maybe the bottom of the barrel is where you get all your lacing. Because holy smokes. So here I'm just dunking some of the air bubbles that came up from the pillow. Now my pillow in this case happens to be strained scraps. And that tends to always bring a little more air bubbles to the pillow paint. But the way you do it to dunk them is you just take the toothpick and dunk the white down yeah, into the paint. The and then as you pull the toothpick out, usually the paint surrounding that white spot will kind of congeal together and make it all concealed. That'd be right on a, right on a lacing line. All right. Let's see. Let's do this so I'm double timing here as I'm just cleaning up the bottom prior to picking it up to show you guys the final result Wow. Look at this. So everyone, that's a wrap. Here are the four coasters that I created in this set, and I'm gonna spend extra time on this one because take a look at how many cells I have got in there. I can't even begin to count. So that's the first coaster, and here are the other three. I hope you enjoyed the video and some of the explanation I provided. And at the very end of this, I'm going to have my Bloom Coaster playlist if you want to see other combinations and other colors. Also, please leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, hit the bell and all. You'll get all my latest art tutorials. Thanks a lot, everybody. Take care. Till next time.